All right, let's check the journal. Where's the new? Uh, Rebecca Gales received a phone call from Rose Cooper after class, uh, asking her to pick up Isabella Santos from the Ermengarde Mansion. On her way out of school, an excited Kylie Suarez stops her favorite teacher from leaving. While waiting at the mansion, Rebecca overheard a brief conversation between the right couple and their, their interior designer and estate agent, Rose Cooper. It was discovered afterwards that Isabella had already left a few hours ago. That's it for that day. Rest in peace, uh, uh, Marianne. What's there? Huh. Yes, there wasn't? She stands perfectly still, her hands out. That? Hey, hey. Okay, okay, you gotta go. You gotta go, you feral cat. Out of the lap. Alright. She stands perfectly still, her hands clasping the straps of her bag like a lifeline, eyes trained at some point near her shoes. There's no anger in her face, only an undeniable hurt. But she's never been good at hiding what she thinks, always the open book, always the one to wear her heart out in the open. But when she looks up, her answer is also as simple. If we keep arguing here, we're going to miss the first few minutes. Um. Her lips are curled up in a smile, though lacking both its usual brightness and glee. It's a smile, nonetheless. I've seen it countless t of times. It's the very same one she would show when she knows she has no other choice, or simply when things get tough for her. But despite everything I already know about her, I still it still catches me off guard. In all honesty, I expected her to run, to balk at the first sign of losing this time. I won't even be surprised. At 26, she is the youngest among the rest of us, less experienced, less accustomed to dealing with trivial quarrels like this. Yet, here she is, holding herself and coping with it like she... <laughs> It like how she would with matters concerning her family. Outside of that, to me, she has always been this childish, naive girl and watching the opposite play out right now. Somehow I find it difficult to wrap my hand around it. All right, that's the Isabella I know. Oh, good. I thought for sure you were going to cry. <clears throat> yeah. But I envy her. What was that for? Stop calling me a crybaby! I'm not one! Oh, don't cry. Stop it! I envy her spirit. Her warmth. Her deep, deep warmth. Her cheer. The shine in her eyes when she looks at the world. How everything seems to simply fall back to a pleasant, lively rhythm with her around. How easily and tightly she fits into our lives, even without bonds only year, only long years could forge, like a lost piece of a puzzle despite her jagged edges. How she draws people to her with ease. How Ashton of all people can be drawn to her. Okay, scaredy cat then. That too! If you repeat that, I swear I'll... <sighs> Let's just go. I make no effort, keeping the bitterness from my tone. I let it seep, linger stiffly in the air as I avert my gaze from them. From their playful banter, their friendly teasing remarks, and Ashton's tender, affectionate smiles. All before the stabbing aches in my heart change into something too painful to bear. It's all in my head, is what I'd often tell myself. Yet, the way my heart rends at just the sight of them hurts. Like a coward, I walk away from all of it, taking with me the small hope the movie will distract me away from these thoughts. And if not the movie, then at least Batcat and Pocket Chibi. Because, like this, it's easy to find something to hate in her. 
No thank God, so we don't have to go through the whole movie again. Uh, dusk has already given way to night when we leave the film fest. Unfortunately, it does nothing to improve my mood like I was hoping. Neither does the muggy air that greets us upon stepping back into the noisy streets. Too busy. Too loud. Too many people taking what little space the sidewalk offers. Forces everyone to bump shoulders with those they barely know, let alone care about. On a normal evening, I probably wouldn't have minded the crowd nor the human weather. Uh, it's not like any of them are bothering me any, uh, are bothering anyone. And yet, even with what's admittingly a pleasant company, I can't bring myself to lighten up. So you got some other time. Wait, we gotta look at the letter first, or did did that already happen? Y yeah. See ya. Oh, she's about to have her freak out. Not even to return the smiles Ashton and Zachary gives us when we go our separate ways. Perhaps this started with Miss Cooper's caller earlier than that. Maybe even the moment I left bed this morning. Bloody hell, it could have been because of that sodding letter for all I know. I couldn't care less at this point. All I want is to get a warm bath, sleep, and wait for the dreadful day to end. Now, if only Isabella would stop babbling, then maybe this dull throbbing at the side of my head won't turn into a full-blown headache, too. Z Zach did a pretty good job with his movie, didn't he? Even though Ash said he ran into some trouble late into filming. Dot. 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 I mean, look at that face. That face just says it all right there. B but I knew he had it in him. It's not like I didn't believe he couldn't do it. Uh, I mean, did you see his face after the credits rolled? All those months he worked on this, and everything's finally... She's gonna tell her shut up. You weren't even watching. Uh, she is so done with Isabella's shit. Only the first minutes. I watched the rest of it, I swear. Besides, Ashton was the one who wouldn't stop asking questions. Well, why do we still need to talk about this then? I liked it. Ash liked it. You liked it. Nothing to discuss, Isabella. Looking for validation like a child. Shouldn't you be telling that to Zachary in person? I'm sure he'll appreciate it better than I ever will. Especially after the reviews he's gonna get. Uh, I know that, but... But maybe there's something you want to say? About what, the movie? I think she already said it all. Zach had you check the scripts before he went through everything, didn't he? Oh, gods. Rebecca, you messed up. You also worked on it, even if it was only for a short time. S so um, maybe, maybe you want to... Apologize for screwing it up? I don't bother waiting for the rest, I just walk away from her. The moment I spot my car, I immediately make a quick beeline for it. Knowing her, this is merely another attempt at starting a conversation. Conversation. Just so we'll have something to fill the dead air to replace the strained atmosphere we've somehow walked into. That was totally not the apparition. One thing, the very thing, I'm not too keen to deal with at present. Behind me, Isabella also changes her pace to match mine, her soft strides growing brisk and uneven in order to catch up. Small part of me half expects she'll suddenly trip. She's not the clumsy sort. There are definitely times when she can be the least coordinated person on the planet. Becca, hey! Oh no. P -p Wait for me! And people wonder why I worry. They're not really completely unfounded once you've already grown familiar with her habits. Though right now, this is also at the very end of the list of things I want to think about. Jeez, Rebecca's so judgmental of her because she's so jealous and envious of her. Sometimes it does become overbearing. Even her voice, as she calls after me, sounds nothing more than background noise to my ears now. Becca! Rebecca! Slow down, will you? Your car's not going to leave without us. The sooner we get on the road, the earlier we can get home. It's Friday, in case you didn't notice. What's so special about Friday, Becca? I know what day it is, but the traffic's not going to magically disappear, even if we go there right now. Yeah, you gotta wait a few hours. I don't want to hear that from you. No, she wants to hear it from Ashton. 
Didn't you used to complain how horrendous the traffic is back home for you? Yeah, but that doesn't have anything to do with this, Becca. Okay. What do you want to do then? Wait it out? Walk? I just want to go home, Isabella. Okay, Rebecca, you're just being ridiculous now. If you want to stay out here longer, I won't stop you. But leave me out of it. I'm not up for any other foolish excursions tonight. I wasn't thinking about an excursion. I want to go home too. It's already late. It's just that you've been in this prickly mood since earlier. Are you really okay? Was it the cold? Or, or did something happen at school? Do you want to talk about it? Long pause follows and it holds everything she's been meaning to ask from the very start. I'm in no mood, but all the same, my hands start stop short of claw er, <laughs> short of unlocking my car and my grip only on the handle tightens. I can feel her eyes boring on me, waiting, hoping patiently for any answer I as I'd give. She's the same as Zachary. They're bad liars. But when you talk to people like them, if you're not careful, they often leave you with no other choice but to admit the truth. Those exact same ones I can't voice. Despite my lack of response, she pushes on, surprisingly. This time her tone is quieter, more tentative than usual. Was it... was it because of... because of the letter? It's a well-meaning question, much like the rest of this talk, yet something in how she says it irks me. If it is, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to cause a scene. I did see something in the mansion, though. I wasn't lying about that. Wherever she wants to take this, I no longer want to hear a word of it. Not at this minute. Preferably never. Especially when there are already a million other things buzzing and prodding inside my head. Sometimes my patience can only be tried for so long. Uh, this cold caught up with me. We'll go with that. And during the open house... Even if there were a lot of people around, there were weird things happening. So yeah, that little lie made her like us more. Gods, Rebecca. I don't know if there was anyone else who noticed, but I heard things. I'm sure it wasn't because I fell down the stairs. Even before that, in the attic, I... Isabella! Y yeah? A pause, though I don't let it last, only to give myself a small window to breathe before I lay down the words between us with as much restraint my patience allows. Which is not much after everything. I can only hope Isabella will simply take them as they are. She could be stubborn as a mule when she wants to be. This kind of conversation tonight. Look, it's been a long day. I think this cold also caught up with me. And I'm really exhausted. Can we talk about this some other time? She blinks and nods her whole body. And although disappointment flashes momentarily in her face, she gives me a curt body nod. A relief enough for me, perhaps the first time I genuinely feel it today. As unpleasant as this day has been, seeing something go the way I've anticipated takes the edge out of it. Even if lying through my teeth had to go with it. Uh, oh, all right. You should have just said so. I told you you should have taken a full week off. Were you able to get the meds I brought you, though? Do you need anything? I could drop by the pharmacy for you. Yeah, no need to fuss. A good night's sleep is all I need. I've been busy the whole day. I guess I should have listened to you and taken it easy. But we have exams to prepare for. It's one or the other, you know? I knew it! Here I thought you were just upset about something. Even Ash looked a little bit worried about you. It's... it's fine. Let's just head home, okay? I'll make it up to you next time. Call me out to lunch or wherever, just... <sighs> not right now. Okay, but should you be driving? If you want, I can call a taxi for us. You'll hate paying the extra fees, but... You'll be able to get some rest on the way home. No, no, don't call a cab. I can manage driving, at least. Just get in the car so we can be on our way. 
The absurdity of taking a cab when you have a car. It's baffling. I'm already opening the door and climbing into the seat before she can protest. Left with no other choice, she follows inside shortly, albeit with a bit of reluctance. The guilt from this will eat at me later, but for now, these little falsehoods are mine to bear and hide under. For now, this is the better choice. Better than pretending she doesn't exist or giving her vague answers. Certainly better than harsh words and outright lashing out at her. I can find a little comfort in that. Thankfully, if there's anything left to be spoken between us after, we won't have to discuss it on the way home. Or rather, we can't. Because no sooner than we hit the road, <laughs> Isabella falls asleep. Despite my foul mood, I still end up suppressing a laughter once the first sounds of her breathing fill the air. Mama? Oh, jeez. Not your mom, Isabella. Slow and steady, the quiet rhythm so completely unlike her, so far removed from every impression anyone has of her. A few faint whimpers will occasionally come from her, but otherwise it's just us, this silence, and it's so, so utterly unexpected. Still a welcome break, of course. Peace and quiet is one thing you'll rarely get with her around. Yet, it's nowhere near comforting. It merely lends the air this strange clarity, every little sound, every single movement more palpable. And with it comes the unease. A jolt of surprise hits me. It's almost comical if this were a different situation. In my haste, I accidentally dislodge my mobile from its seat on the dashboard when I swipe on the screen while driving. Soon, I'm scrambling blindly for it with my other hand while keeping a steady eye on the road ahead. A voice crackles from the loudspeakers before I can put it back. Although muffled heavily by the surface, I recognize the person on the other line from her chipper tone alone. Hello? Uh, Miss Cooper? Oh, you're still awake. Evening. I hope I didn't disturb you or anything. I... I know it's a bit late. Sorry about that. She's about to be murdered anyway. I just want to check on you and Isabella. That girl's still not answering her mobile. Were you able to meet up with her? Uh, yes. She's with me. We're on our way home. Hello? What was that again? I can't hear you properly. Sorry, I can't hear you. I'm being murdered right now. Uh, sorry. Let me just fix this dumb phone. Help me! I'm being murdered! <laughs> it's a scary ghost! <laughs> Alright. My hand stops dead for a moment. I spare the device a brief glance, waiting as if that's gonna make a difference. <laughs> Seconds pass. Nothing happens, though. Frankly, I'm not sure what I'm expecting, but the lines in my mouth forms into a frown, regardless. Miss Cooper? Yes, still here. Still here, still being murdered. <laughs> it's quite awful. Did you say something? Just that I didn't get the last part. What were you saying again? You need to speak up. I'm currently being murdered. No, I thought you... Never mind. Must be the signal acting up. Help me. Help me. Uh, come again? What? Is everything alright over there? Certainly. Is something wrong? What wouldn't? Okay. Uh, you seem to be busy. If this is a good time, I can just call you back some... Uh, I have to make a conscious effort not to panic right then and there, although my tight hold on the steering wheel tells a different story altogether. Miss Cooper! Rose? Hey, Rose! Are you still there? Only a burst of static answers me, and then... Maybe this lapse is entirely because of exhaustion. It has been a long day, and I haven't fully recovered from last week's bout of flu, contrary to what I've been telling people. 
Though perhaps, had I paid closer attention to it, had I not been so occupied with other thoughts, I probably would have noticed earlier that it never came from my phone. Oh my god, it came from the car the whole time. Oh jeez, but from somewhere right behind me. There we go. <laughs> Love it. Love it. We're gonna crash this car. Time slows to a crawl. Looking up is a mistake. The f Who had? Oh wait, I guess that's over her shoulder. She's in Britain, so she's like driving on the wrong side of the road. So it's gonna be over her left shoulder? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, first thing I see is its face. A ghastly shade, every inch battered, bruised, and bloodied. Even in the darkness and the world passing by in a blur of lights outside, I can still make out the wounds. Blood still oozes from it, little trails of crimson running down its face, glistening under what little light is there. And it is the gleam in its eyes that catches mine. The quiet plea, the anguish, and the desperation in them. More than its hideous features and the awful stench of gore now soaking the air. And try as I might, I can't bring myself to look away. Even as its lips contort into a horrific smile. <laughs> Even as a sharp, harsh noise pierces the air and the silence around us. Rebecca! Yep. What? I'm driving. Car! Car! Eyes on the road! <laughs> She's gonna beat the shit out of the car. Against everything I've been taught and I'm constantly reminded myself, I close my eyes. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> it's a brief moment. A short, vivid second of muscle memory and instinct completely taking over. God's is breathing. And if I didn't allow it, my ha if my hands didn't move or my feet didn't hit the brakes in that exact second, I might have. Isabelle and I might have. No. I shake the notion away before I lose myself in it. Right now, it's an ugly line of thought I refuse to venture into. Not when breathing is a struggle and every ounce of strength has been totally drained from my body. Most definitely, not while Isabella's panicked voice beside me rings in my ears. We're still alive. We're safe. That's all that matters, but not that thing in the back seat. But it is not her face that I look for when I finally open my eyes. All gone. I expected stains, little telling marks and creases on the covers to show me where it sat not a second ago. But whoever, whatever it is, it left not a single trace. And though courage is a hard thing to gather at this point, I take what little of it remains in me and turn towards the back seat. Even then, there's none. Dot dot dot. Or was there really something in there in the first place? But you know what? We all have these experiences, and we're not going to talk about them with each other until probably the very end when everyone's or half of everyone's dead. I clicked the button. With how empty it is, I'm beginning to doubt it. This stupid flu again. I need a long rest after this. She's so calm and relaxed after almost getting into a car accident. My hands fall uselessly to my sides, numb from how taut my grip on the wheel has gone, yet still trembling from the unexpected rush of adrenaline. Against my ears, my heart still pounds in a rat erratic rhythm, and my breathing hasn't slowed down. But the world has already righted itself without waiting for me, and little by little, second after second, as I sit here motionless, color begins to seep back around me. Along with it are the sounds and a voice, no longer the indistinct ringing it was earlier. Rebecca? Becca? Are you okay? Answer me, will you? You're scaring me? Because <laughs> she's still driving? You know what? 
I think we should just call a taxi since... Can you keep it down? Oh. Oh, just so flippant. Strained, harsh, completely unintentional. But with, with heat prickling at the back of my eyes. Heat prickling at the back of her eyes. Odd. I, I can't say I've ever heard of such a thing or experienced it, and the mild throbbing at my temple I could honestly do with a little silence for now, Isabella. Keep it down? We almost crashed, Becca! I... I know what happened! It was a lapse, I'm sorry! A lapse? You call that a lapse? Becca, I really don't want to end up a mangled mess on the side of the road, or a mangled mess anywhere! Oh gods, I'm so sorry, Isabella. I missed that. A QTE. All I'm asking, if the time ever comes, which I hope isn't right now, is a peaceful death. Give that one to me at least. Not that I'm asking for it, but please. Not screaming like your passengers. Isabella. Belle. Belle, you're overreacting. If you're so worried, why don't you drive? You don't have a license. I keep telling you to get one, didn't I? For the past five years! Okay, Rebecca, you were almost in an accident. Now you're being absurd. Just tell her what you saw in the back seat. Do you see why now? I... I wasn't really expecting to stay here this long. I thought it'd just be for... a year or two? All of a sudden, a pensive mood comes over her. Isabella looks away then, while what's left of my little lecture never crosses the tip of my tongue. I don't allow it to. Because in each of those words she let loose earlier is a small truth. Her stay has always been meant to be something fleeting. Earn some good money, go home, it's what she'd tell herself during her first year here. Now, half a decade later, I'm not sure if she still believes that. Even I'm not sure if I still believe it. And if there's something in her reasons that has changed along the way, even if I already have a hunch, it's one thing I'll never bother to ask. Those are hers to keep. I'll be careful this time, I promise. Just... just please. Can we give this whole thing a rest for now? Gods, we only just died. Uh, why are you overreacting? She nods, and that is the end of it. We spend the rest of the trip back to S S Salem Well in silence. Salem Well? In silence. With Isabella gripping her seat tightly. All thoughts of an overactive imagination playing tricks on a flu addled mind and of smiles never meant for my eyes, abandoned if only for a brief moment. Da da da. October 25th, Tuesday. What is this place? Just, this is their residences? They live at a uh, motel? Odd. Very odd. It begins innocently enough. Tuesday morning arrives like any other day before it, bright and clear. Even though it comes with an extra helping of the unusual October weather, I appreciate being able to catch a glimpse of the clear skies lately. After going through a bout of sickness last week, I it does something to lift the mood of what would otherwise be a dreary morning. And despite it being mostly a creature of habit, I wind up waking earlier than usual because of it. Still no earlier than Isabella, it appears. Ah, we can hear the news report. I've assumed she'll take a day or two off because of what happened to Miss Cooper, but that doesn't seem to be the case. The sound of the morning news drifts from her unit when I walk past on the way to my mailbox. Chances are around this hour she's already dressed and ready to go, probably just waiting for the next bus to arrive. I've tried following her example before, but I don't think I'll be repeating that. <sighs> really? How can anyone be up before the sun is up? It's a habit she got from home, she said, instilled in her by the kind of life she grew up in. Farming, obviously. Uh, like clockwork, it's always at 4 a.m., either to help with the chores or prepare her little siblings for school. Never mind. 
It surprised me the first time. She just didn't look like someone who could. In the end, I have simply passed it off as one of the many things anyone will have to get used to around her. And if she ends up hooking up with uh, Ashton, that's going to be a bit of a bother for him, I, I'm going to assume. Not that I've ever fully understand. I'm my parents' only child. We aren't well off, but so far I've lived a relatively easy life. I didn't have to think about bills or food for the next day or paying for any siblings' tuition on top of my own or supporting, supporting a sick father's medication. All I have to worry about were my grades. If it gained mum and da's approval or what we'd be having for dinner. When put next to hers, they all pale in comparison. They look less like problems, more like petty issues this way. Which I, I'm guessing she's also very resentful of. <laughs> petty issues. But as unimportant as it all sounds, sometimes it's ugly head rears at the most inappropriate moments. And sometimes they come through your mailbox in the form of a fancy looking letter, pretty ribbons and all. Whoever sent this has spent silly money on the envelope, envelope alone. I like that. Silly money. Verging on ridiculous, really. This is ridiculous money. I can already imagine Isabella wrinkling her nose when she sees this, then she'll complain about unnecessary expenses and rich people problems. Bravo. I'm almost afraid to touch it myself. Might catch the rich person disorder, I don't know. As if simply brushing a hand against this crisp surface will be enough to put a crease on it, and it'll be a terrible slight to the sender. There's a W on it. But as extravagant as I find this, it isn't really the first time I've received one. Most of the time, it's not even for me, so who am I to complain? Either way, no look of surprise crosses my face once I flip the envelope over to see my parents' names written in a neat script. Nothing new, then. Weird. Why would she get her mail for her parents in her mailbox? Uh, their years in the academe. I, I, I've not encountered that word before. Academy. I don't know. Naturally brought with it various connections. People from other fields. Art, science, business, politics, you name it. This one, though, gives off a much personal vibe. Letters like this usually come from old students, people who've grown fond of my parents, and they, in turn, treat like children of their own. I've only met a few of them. Most have moved on to become successful in their chosen careers, and little letters like this are their way of expressing gratitude. It's one thing Mum and Da are proud of, rightfully so, and I'm happy for them. But there are times... There are times I wish they'll remember they have a daughter here. The real one. All oh, those fake daughters. Not that it's of any importance now. Uh, it's not like they didn't raise me well and provided for me and wanted me to become something more than a high school teacher. They did. I wouldn't be where I am now if it weren't for their hard work. Not like I did any hard work. And like a dutiful child, I do everything I can to give back except get a better career. Even if it's as small a thing as letting them know they've got another mail waiting for them because for some odd reason they can't get their own mail. The phone rings for a good minute before someone answers. Mum, her voice is warm as I remember. Becca? Hi, Mum. How's the conference going? Oh, look at how happy she is. Well enough. Until your da sprained his ankle. What is this voice? Oh no, is it bad? I'm all right. In case anyone in this family cares to listen, I'm all right. Very much alive, darling. And there you have it. He'll be up and walking in a few weeks, don't worry. We're going to have to extend our stay here until it heals, though. Is something the matter? Nothing big. Just that this mail arrived for you this morning. A lie. Thankfully, she doesn't notice. Although, if I'm going to be honest, a small part of me yearns for her to do so and ask me about it, but I put down that idea almost as soon as it surfaces. I shouldn't make them fret. They're busy, after all, with a sprained ankle and a conference, or whatever. Hmm? What does it say? 
Raise your glasses. Give cheers to the good times. Blah, blah. Mega manners. That isn't how I taught you to read. Don't say blah, blah. <laughs> Sorry. You are cordially... Ah, it's an invitation, Mum, for a housewarming party. From, uh, Hana? The name rings a bell, though at the moment I can't recall when or where I've heard it recently. Must be another one of those fake daughters. It must be nothing too important if I didn't bother committing it to memory. There are lots of Hanas in the world, so who knows? Hmm. Hana. Hana. Um, she also wrote you a note, Mum. It says you used to be her private tutor at the Evans Mansion, and that she misses you and... Oh, God, I accidentally clicked too soon. Oops. Uh, it makes my heart clench to read another openly... To read another openly say those words to them, the same ones I want to tell them. I want to see you too. It's been years since we've been together as family. Odd. And if there's one thing that hasn't changed from childhood, it's that mum and da are still busy with their respective careers. Out of the country, away on some meeting or symposium, sometimes for months on end. Guess that explains that. It only grew more frequent with the years until I'm old enough to live my own, although they still manage to be around each other. I'd like to think that's how I've become independent as such an early age. They've always praised me for that, because then they would have to take time out of their social lives. At times, I wish they didn't. Evans? Oh, I remember now! Honey, it's Hannah! Hannah Evans! Remember? Bright girl, two years older than Becca? Didn't she get married a few years ago? Seven now, I think. Oh yeah, seven is a few years. But nah, they grow up so fast, these kids. Yeah, she invited us to that too. Fonte de Medici. But we missed that one because you had to present your paper in Singapore. We did send her a note after. Still a shame we couldn't attend, though. What is it about this time? Oh, just a housewarming. She sent another invite for a housewarming party. Oh, another one. Becca, when is it? This Friday, Mum. Oh, that's too bad. We'd love to be there, but Da's not in a condition to go walking around. I guess we'd have to decline again. I really miss that girl. Rebecca, go in her stead. I could go in your place. Oh, well, what a coincidence. I let it slip without thinking. Personally, I've never been fond of gatherings, regardless of how simple people make it seem. But if there's one thing I hate hearing, that disappointed note in Mum's uh, voice always ranks first. Whether it's directed at me or some other thing doesn't matter. Are you sure? Don't you have work this Friday? The event will be in the evening, Mum. It shouldn't take anything away from my schedule. God's her mother's accent. I, I don't... It just sounds so weird. It's all right. The invites are two people. I can bring someone with me so things don't get boring. Oh, she could bring Ashton. Maybe he has Isabella. <laughs> I clicked that button again. I see. Maybe you can also invite Ashton? Oh. <laughs> Mom, that's a sure no from him. He hates attending parties. Which means Re 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 Rebecca really wants to invite him. Uh, but, but I'll see what I can do. If not, I can always bring Isabella with me. You know her. She won't say no if there's food involved. <laughs> Except your parents don't know her. Okay, if it's not going to be a big problem for you, I don't see why not. We owe you this one, darling. No problem, Mum. I'll even say hi to Hana for you. Oh. She looks so adorable when she's so happy. Please do. And let her know we'd love to see her once we're back in the city. Leave her our number or something. I will. But you know... The two of you would have become really good friends. Don't you remember? You met with her once. If my memory serves me right, you were 12 then? And you lectured her. This too, I can't recall. It's probably one of those meetings where we only talked a bit before going our ways. If she did leave an impression, I'm pretty sure I would have written about it somewhere, or at least recognized her name. As it is, the only few people I remember clearly from that time in my life is Ashton and and Mandy. Oh my god, 
an old friend of hers that she was secretly in love with, aside from Ashton, and died, and who will haunt her. Another thing she has in common with Marianne, aside from architecture. To some extent, Mom must have sensed my confusion because she laughs. Don't push yourself too hard, darling. We know you can't, can't uh, do too much, you know, only being a high school teacher. Really? It felt like having two daughters back then. Sometimes I wish they didn't send her away to boarding school. But, well, you know how often that goes with them. Still, try talking to her while you're there. Oh, we'll see. I'll let you know what happens after. Just avoid her. The entire party. Just avoid her. I'm looking forward to it, darling. Take care of yourself. Will do. You too, Mom. She's like a puppy. Bye. Uh, tell Da to be careful next time. She chuckles, then... Hearty one. Tender and always light on my ears. She may be a stern teacher, but this is the part of her I love the most. The sound of it still echoes, even as our call comes to an abrupt end, bringing with it a memory from so many years ago. When life and responsibilities that accompany adulthood are things far from our minds. If given the chance, I'd love to go back to those. I don't dwell on it, though, shaking it all away almost as soon as the memory forms a clear picture in my head. I've always wondered how Isabella can easily pretend everything's normal over a phone call, then bounce back to her usual self immediately after. I've seen her do it plenty of times. For me, it just drains whatever energy I have. And with the whole day of teaching still ahead of me, I can't afford to look exhausted in front of my students. They can smell weakness, and they know how to prey on it. Even for a wee bit, uh, it's never a good example to set. So with another sigh, I put everything at the back of my mind and tread back to my room. The rest of my day waits. Dot dot dot. Fifteen minutes later, heading back out, dressed for the day, my car keys in hand. Ordinarily, I don't stop for anything. There's never a need to. That's the beauty of this apartment complex. It's quiet and everyone keeps to themselves. No useless platitudes in the morning. No need to wear a smile on your face lest other people are noise nosy enough to ask. Today, however, the morning broadcast still plays from Isabella's room. My brisk pace slows to a stop and a frown gradually forms in my face. She hasn't left. Of course, this isn't unusual. There are times when I've left earlier than she did, like last Friday before their open house. But those days are few and far between. It, it only happens in the direct, direst circumstances, though the last part of that might be a bit of an exaggeration. However, with what's happened in the last few days, maybe today is one. The death of a friend isn't something anyone can brush off, and for someone like Isabella... Isabella is the kind of who gets attached to people easily. With Zachary, Ashton, and I, that has been the case. I can't imagine what she might be going through right now, especially when the woman was someone she owed a lot, despite their training being brief. I've given her the space last night in deference. Perhaps today might be the proper time to check on her. Oh, whatever. I've still got time anyway. With light steps, I move closer to her door, hand already poised to knock. Still, I don't do so until I hear her answer. Isabella? Belle? Are you in there? No answer. After a second, I finally knock, lightly so I don't disturb her, in case she's sleeping and has merely left the telly running last night. Never mind how she never lets that happen, ever. Waste of electricity and all. I just want to check on you before I leave. Is that okay? Are you going to work today, Belle? Still nothing. I'm about to leave. If you want, I can drop you off. That is what causes her to get up. Another round of knocking. Then I'm fishing out a copy of her key from my bag and unlocking the door. Oh my goodness. It even has a rose on it. Don't remind her. She lent it years ago, after I complained about the mess and offered my help in cleaning up. I thought the gesture was completely unnecessary back then, after all, I could always knock. 
She never did bother taking them from me, always returning it or turning away from the conversation whenever I insist. At one point, I simply stopped trying to hand it back to her. Isabella? I'm coming in, all right? And this is what will make her want to take the keys back. Without waiting for her answer, I push the door open and step inside, and she has hung herself. Oh, bat cat. Her unit is is still a mess. Uh, instant cup noodles on the table, a pile of clothes on one side, paper strewn about everywhere, and an unkept bed, among other things. But at least she has bat cat. This. This much is a given, will always be a given. I've been here several times already, and I still wonder how she can function like a human being with a place in the state. However, that's neither here nor there. I'm not sure what I'm expecting, but it's certainly not finding an empty flat. Granted, she could have left earlier, far earlier than usual. She never ever leaves without making sure she's unplugged everything. That's something she doesn't forget to do. It doesn't help that her bathroom appears unused this morning. Gods, it's five in the morning. Another habit, and I can only, uh, it can only mean she hasn't been here since, since the report. Last night? Perhaps, perhaps even since the morning after Miss Cooper's death? Either idea doesn't sit well with me. What with the news we've been hearing lately of murder? The authorities are still trying to find the cause of death for all the victims. Early investigation revealed most of them were employed under Briar Realty Corporation at the time of death. Uh-oh. Meanwhile, BRC has refused to comment on this. Because they know about it. They're in on it. And Isabella, unfortunately, has fallen victim to it. Gathering my wits, I immediately place a call to her mobile. It rings for a good minute, sound a comfort in itself, but when another minute rolls by without her answering... Well, I'm not a woman prone to panicking. Sudden bouts of temper, maybe, usually, but never panic, despite how I may sound when speaking. But when it ultimately goes straight to her voicemail, a sigh is the only thing I let out in her voicemail. The pause doesn't last long, though. In the next moment, my fingers are already moving across the screen in search of the two people who might be able to help. It's Ashton's number I find first and dial. Call it habit, but even Isabella thinks he's dependable when the situation calls for it. Despite how much they give each other grief, that already says a lot about him. There's Zachary, but around this hour he's probably still sleeping. If he has freelance work, it's very likely he's just gotten himself in bed. He's the last person I want to bother, if anything. Wait, doesn't take long. See you in a click. And then Ashton's voice echoes the receiver, rough and still heavy with sleep. He never did grow fond of mornings. Becca? Christ, what time is it? Uh, what's up? Not to you, apparently. Uh, uh, good one. Did you call us early just to make that joke? I'm going back to sleep. No, Ash, hold on! This is important! Becca, stake out last night make this quick. I've still got a few hours before the chief bothers me. Sorry, I'll let you go back to sleep after. It's just that... Wait, you were on a stakeout last night? Did I say that? Ah, shit. Well, he is in law enforcement. Forget I said that. Forget I said anything. Forget we had this conversation. So, you have no idea? About what? About what? I also have no idea why we're talking so early in the morning, so there's that. Okay, weird. About what? About what? I expected it just to keep echoing. No! Will you stop sleep talking or whatever for a second? Belle didn't come home last night. She's gone! Who? <gasps> Isabella! Instead of an answer, a brief pause comes after. And then he reveals that she's been at his place this whole time. <laughs> Followed by something blunt and heavy hitting a hard surface and a string of rather colorful curses from him. Ah! Well, that was weird. The moment might have been one of the many things I'll keep to myself and remember fondly in the next few days, even in masturbating to it, if things aren't the way they are. When he picks up again, there's no trace of sleep left in his voice. Say that again from the top. Oh, jeez. 
Isabella's gone, Ash. She didn't come home last night. She might have gone to a bar and had a casual hookup. Her flat's empty. She left her telly running. You know she doesn't do that at- Dear gods, Ash, she left the telly on. She left her clock plugged in. Okay, Becca, stop. Calm down first. You're starting to panic. And not! Oh, well. You are. Breathe. One person's not going to simply disappear like that. This is Isabella we're talking about. Did you try calling her? What did you think is the first thing I did? She's not picking up. It went to her voicemail. How about Zach? Did you check with him? Not yet. I didn't want to bother him. You know he has trouble sleeping and all that. All right. I'll go ask Zach. I'll call you back. No, 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 wait! He ends the call before I can utter a single word of protest. But for the first time since entering this room, tension has gone from my shoulders and my breathing has eased. The bed creaks as I sink down on it with a sigh. The telly still blares the same uninteresting news and I've... I'm surrounded by clutter. I must clean. All the same, it feels strangely calm to be here without eh, without worry nagging at me, really. I'll have to apologize to Zachary later for sending Ashton his way this early, but for now, relying on the latter for this isn't the wrong choice. It never will be. That's something I won't ever doubt in him, much like his promises. And true to his words, he calls back only a few minutes after the last one has ended. She's with Zach. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. She could have at least sent a message last night. <laughs> Not coming home, hooking up with Zach. Don't worry, Ashton's all yours. XOXO. Bell. What are you, her mother? It's one thing to hear that from Isabella, but from Ashton. I don't want to hear anything like that from you. <laughs> I'm serious. You've got to stop treating her like she's one of your students, Becca. You don't have to keep tabs on her every time. Last I checked, she's only three years younger than the two of us. That's almost a decade gap from those kids you're teaching, you know. Says the person who keeps calling her Scaredy Cat. I... I... That's... Uh-oh. That's not related. At all. It, it has nothing to do with flirting. Anyway, I'll go check how she's doing. Don't stress yourself out. You go ahead to work. Wait, you? Don't you have a precinct to be at? Whatever happened to not treating her like one of my students? Because if anyone's going to ask me, I think you're doing the same thing. Zack said it's an emergency. Something happened last night. Emergency? He didn't put in those exact same words, but it sounded like it. The condo broke. Ash, what really happened? Is Isabella fine? She had a breakdown. She's alright. She's safe. Zack let her stay the night after she... <sighs> Look, okay. Z-Man wasn't clear about it. Let me handle this. I'll check on her. I'll bring her home. It sounds like a lie if I've ever heard one. The sort where he omits things so people won't fret, and I'm not sure whether I should be happy he cares that much to do with that. There shouldn't be a need for this between us, is there? We grew up together, didn't we? He knows I'm capable of at least hearing out the truth without it gnawing at me for the rest of the day. He knows me better than that. I know him better than that. Frankly, there's plenty of other things to say about this. But despite, and after all, the trouble he went through, with how things are moving at the moment, only one thought occurs to me. What should I say? Um, I can handle it. Oh, he doesn't like that. Oh, well, screw you, Ashton. Why does he have to go such lengths for a person he only met five years ago? I wish I could ask him that. I wish I could simply say it to his face and finally get a straight answer from him instead of doing whatever this is we're doing. Instead of beating around the bush. Has the years changed us this much? Has adulthood changed us this much? You've done enough, Ash. Let me take it from here. Ashton is quiet for a little while, but I can almost see the frown in him, hear the gears turning in his head. Don't you have a class to teach today? Tuesdays are your busiest this school year, aren't they? Yeah, but someone has to check on her. And... and... I don't want to impose on you any further. I've already disturbed your sleep. You're not imposing. Besides, I'm doing you a favor. I know you, Becca. You hate being late or missing a day of work for a very small thing. Leave this to me. 
You said you're waiting for a call from the chief. I'm dropping by the precinct anyway. There's some trouble I have to fix with those guys. It won't be completely out of the way. Ashton, I... I trail off, at lost for words in the end. From the start, it's a losing battle. We may have been together for a long time, known each other far better than other people, but that doesn't mean we often see things eye to eye. Time and again, it's a matter of agreeing to disagree. This is oft how the status quo is kept. Whenever it comes to this, I can only accept it begrudgingly. <sighs> okay, whatever you want to do. I'll let you know what happened afterwards, I promise. I'll call you later. You have a good day. Don't even, don't even bother listening to his goodbye. Just hang up on him. I accidentally clicked too soon. I admit the way he puts it isn't comforting enough. He can be blunt like that. So many unknown variables. So many words left be, left unsaid. See, I thought it was like, no, you can tell me. I can handle you telling me what's going on. I thought that's what the choice was. Not, no, let me handle her. It's so vague. Just so vague sometimes, and it's just a matter of luck. Um, I wish he'd simply lay them out all in the open, because like this, I'm more inclined to think there's an exaggeration on the other's part. If it's from Zachary or Ashton, I don't know. In the end, all I can do is wait, go about my day, and hope for the best. Before leaving, I spare Isabel's room on last glance, disturbingly quiet now without her in it. I'll get answers from her later, one way or another. For now, my concerns are best left here. Alright, next time we shall continue the story of Rebecca. And hopefully not get her killed like we have with uh, Isabella and Marianne. Oh.